Description for element unavailable. My app. Header. Tap the button. TAP. Button. 42 taps left. My app. Header. Tap the button. TAP. Button. 42 taps left. What is this? And are you using this in your applications? You should be, because this demonstrates the accessibility features of your NativeScript applications. Is your app accessible to those folks that have disabilities? In this video, I'm going to give you four tips on how to add accessibility to your NativeScript apps and how to test accessibility. Hey, welcome back. My name is Alex. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing to the channel where you'll see NativeScript tips, tricks, and tutorials that we do here pretty often. And today we're talking about a very important topic. Now there's the American Disabilities Act, and I'm sure other countries have their own version of this where you have to support people with disabilities, people that can't see, people that can't hear. You have to support them, and especially with digital media like websites and devices, people with disabilities have to be able to use those devices. Now, by default, out of the box, iOS and Android both have these capabilities. You just have to enable them, and uh, there are some features that are enabled by default, but others are not, and you can customize these. And NativeScript, of course, also takes advantage of this and exposes some of the features. We'll see what solutions are available and how do you even test whether your app is accessible or not. Thanks to Mark for asking this very important question. So here we go. Now, tip number one is using native tools. When you create a NativeScript application, underneath it creates a native project. So for example, if you build your project for iOS, you're gonna get a project, a workspace, that you can open in Xcode. We're not gonna be doing that here, but Xcode does come with some tooling that's able to look into your application while it's running on the simulator and examine it while it's running. Let's take a look at that now. So I have Xcode open here, and I'm gonna go to the top in the Xcode menu. I'm gonna open Developer Tools, it's a submenu, and then Accessibility Inspector. And there's a drop down here. There's my Mac. So you can test your Mac apps here as well for accessibility using this same exact tool. But what I wanna do is actually select the simulator where I'm running my NativeScript application. By the way, I just created a blank NativeScript application using the Hello World template with TypeScript. So we have the simple interface where I, if I tap the button here, it's gonna decrement that counter. Pretty familiar to all of you by now, I'm sure. When you select the simulator from this accessibility inspector, you're able to take a look at the different UI elements in here and see how a blind person would see something like this. For example, I can click on this little follow point to activate it, and then I can select some kind of UI element here to examine it. For example, I'm going to select my app in the header here, and you'll see that we have a label that says my app. That's true, it is a label and says my app. And then traits. Traits is important because traits will let the user hear what type of element this is. So for a button, the voiceover is gonna say, button and for a header element the voiceover is going to say header you also have your ui hierarchy down here which is very handy this tool is not only handy for debugging accessibility but you can also take a look at your ui hierarchy you have your ui window transition view drop shadow view layout container navigation bar and then finally you get to that my app header okay so let's select a different element let's select this button here now you can see that the label says tap the trait says button, and you actually have this little activate menu item where you can perform a tap. So I can click on this, and you can see that it's actually performing that tap and decrementing that counter. And you also have your UI hierarchy displayed here as well. On the screen, you also have this little speaker icon. So when you click on that, TAP button, 24 taps left, my app header, tap the button, TAP button, 24 taps left. It's going to cycle through all the different UI elements that are labeled for accessibility. And all the ones you've heard it say are actually labeled for accessibility by default. Now, you might not want to have all your UI elements enabled for accessibility. I'm gonna show you how to turn that off shortly because what if you have a label that's just a square, that's a graphic that doesn't really have any value, it's just a display element. You might not want that to be read out loud. Next, we have another tab here. This tab right here is the audit tab, very handy. So I can say run audit, 
and this will take a look at everything on the screen and tell me what might be wrong. Now, first thing it says is hit area is too small. So it's taking a look at that button there and it's analyzing it. And according to the requirements for accessibility, that button is too small. You can even hit on this little question mark here for more information. It says that it should be at least 44 in height, but this button is 40 in height. Okay, so interesting. Let's go back to our project. By the way, this accessibility inspector is always on top, so I'm gonna move it out of the way. And here in my code, I'm gonna open up the app folder and then main page. This is the label, this is that button that's too small, and then this is another label that prints out the message. Let's head over to the app.css and we can actually change the height of that label in CSS. So I'm gonna say height equals, uh, let's say 50. So now that height of that button is going to be taller. As you can see, my selection is still there from the accessibility inspector, but you can see that that button is now taller. So what I'm going to do is bring this back up and rerun my audit. So I'm going to tap on this run audit. And you can see that that message actually went away. So that works. Now this button is large enough as a tap area and uh, that passes. Now these other messages here, the dynamic text font sizes are unsupported. This is there to be able to reset your size of the font, smaller or larger, and your font should automatically resize. So uh, your OS is able to do that, and you can do that actually in the Accessibility Inspector as well, right here. This last tab is Settings. Here you can slide the font size, and as you can see, it's actually not doing anything for me here. If I go back to the home screen and change the font size, you can see that that's actually working. The, uh, the titles of the apps are getting larger and smaller. And I'm sure that some of the built-in apps will display correctly. For example, let's take a look at the calendar. Now you can see that the font sizes are a certain way. And if I increase this, you can see that the font sizes increase. This is a default Apple app and all the fonts work just fine. And they respond to the dynamic text changes. Uh, a couple of other things I wanted to show you here. Invert colors, uh, you can see it definitely on the home screen. So if I tap on that, you can see that it's going to change the colors in the background. Um, this is there so that if something is not visible, you can change the colors if the background is matching with the font color of the icons, that helps. Increase contrast, this will increase the contrast. Reduce transparency, this is a good one. So you can see that in the bottom there, there's a translucent look to that bottom tab where the icons are. And if you click on reduce transparency, it's no longer transparent, it's just one opaque color. Same thing with this pull down thing. There's hardly any transparency there as I'm pulling it down, especially around this area right here in the middle. And if that is off, then you can see that when I pull this down, we have transparency there. And then reduce motion will actually cut out some of that animation. So when you open up these apps, and close the apps, you can see that it just fades in and out instead of doing that crazy zooming in effect. Now notice something else. I'm going to select this tap the button label. In the basic description, it says label, tap the button, and then the trait says static text. So this is basically just reading to me the default, but you can change that. And if I have this voiceover read it, tap the button. So it's gonna read that uh, label exactly uh, as the default text of the label says, but we can change that. So this is tip number two. Let's head over to the code and I'm gonna show you how to use NativeScript's built-in functionality to change what that says. And what you get is on every single view, that's a UI element in NativeScript, you're gonna have an automation text property that you can attach. So for this label, I can say, automation text equals and I want to be as descriptive as possible so this is going to be read out loud to people that are blind they can't see so you have to think about how you want the message to come across for people that can't see this label what is the instruction here well you can say instructions tap the button to decrement the counter there's your automation text now automation text will work on both iOS and Android, but that's really the only option you have in native script to change automation text. There's no other support unless you get into native APIs and I'll show you that in a second. Now let's take a look at what that did. I'm gonna select that label one more time. And now you see that here in the basic, it says label instructions, tap the button to decrement the counter. 
And when I tap on the speaker, Instructions. Tap the button to decrement the counter. So you can see that it actually read out that whole line, which is a lot more descriptive. Now you can be even more descriptive with all your UI elements. For example, even this stack layout can be a group that you can group together. So you can say automation text equals counter area. And then um, you can add something on this button that says automation text tap. Now, you could also say tap button, but when it's a button or when it's a link, you actually don't need to write out button or link because it's going to be read automatically. And you'll see that in a second. And then finally, this last label is interesting because now we can actually data bind the automation text. We can have that data binding syntax and we can add a string here like results colon plus message. So this will be a dynamic and it will be data bound to the view model and the automation text will be actually updated with every iteration. So let's save that and let's take a look. First of all, I want you to take a look at the UI hierarchy here. You'll see that we have a UI view and then we have counter area. Now, this used to be called UI view in the hierarchy, but now it's more specific. It's actually adopting your automation text. We called it a counter area. So now it's showing counter area. Same thing with the button here. The automation text says tap. So that's what it says right there in the UI hierarchy. And then you have the instructions and then you have the results. Now notice the button has a trait of button. When I have that read out loud, tap button. Okay, so it said tap button. It's actually reading the word tap in an automation text. And then it's also calling it a button so that I know that it's a button that I can tap. Then we have that uh, label that says result 42 taps. Result 42 taps left. Okay, so that's pretty nice. And if I tap this a few more times. Instructions. Tap the button to decrement the counter. Tap button. Result. 38 taps left. It uh, decremented 38 taps and it read the new value. Pretty neat. But uh, iOS and Android have a ton of accessibility features that are not available in NativeScript directly because there are so many different ones on iOS and Android, they don't match up. The only one that they implemented was automation text. And that's like the lowest common denominator. There's a ton of other features. Now, how do we get those other things? For example, one common thing you might do is you might update the traits that are available. Let's say uh, what I commonly do in NativeScript is I have a label that I want to put a tap event on. Essentially, that turns that label into a button or a label that actually turns into a link that opens up a browser, a system browser. That should be labeled as a link so that people know that they've been taken out of the application into another application. Very important to label that as a link and give it the link trait. Right now, if we take a look at this here, it's just static text, this label. How do we make that and give it a different trait? Well, you can do that with native code. So let me show you. We have this label right here and I'm going to hook up a loaded event. Now, whether you're using Angular or Vue or Core, it doesn't matter, they all have the loaded event. So you can hook up a loaded event. I'm gonna call that event unloaded. And here I'm gonna to go to the code and export a function called onloaded with args of type event data. Now args.object is going to be my label in this case, but I'm just gonna cast it as a view. Const view equals args.object as view and view should be imported. Now this is the native script view. It's a base class for all the different UI widgets. Buttons, labels are all views. Now view.ios is going to be a UI view. And by the way, I've also uh, imported native script platform declarations here. So in package.json, you can see that I have that right here. TNS platform declarations under dev dependencies. I have a video on this channel showing you exactly how to do that and what the benefits are. What this lets me do is cast this property, this iOS property of a native script view as a UI view which is a iOS type. So this will only work on iOS. You'd have to do something equivalent for Android. Look up your Android properties and make sure that you are running on Android before you do this. So we, we do want to do a check. If view.iOS 
then we run this code. Otherwise, it's going to crash if we run this code on Android by accident. So view.ios as UI view, and I'm going to say const iOS view. So now we can just write iOS code. Look at all these different options we have here. How do we even get started with this? Well, you'd have to check out the Apple documentation, the developer documentation to see what accessibility options are available. But I will show you right now how to update the traits. There's a lot of different ones, but I'll show you traits. The property you want is called accessibility traits. So here you can set the traits that you want. And these are constants in the system. So you can say UI accessibility trait. You can see all the different accessibility traits here. So for example, if I wanted that label to actually have the trait of a button, I would select this trait right here and assign it to that label. Now this would be really bad practice because my label doesn't actually have a tap event. So it's not really a button. But if I did attach a tap event to my label, you probably want to call that a button. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to select that label here. And you can see now the traits, it says button. And when this is read out loud, Instructions. Tap the button to decrement the counter button. It read it as a button, even though the UI element we used was actually a label. Okay, so that was tip number three. And finally, tip number four is accessibility is quite an advanced topic and there's a ton of different things you can do here. You can research what you need to do, which properties you need to change, and you'd have to do this for iOS and for Android. But there's actually a plugin available for NativeScript and it's called the Noda NativeScript Accessibility Extensions. It's very well documented. There's a ton of stuff in here, tons of properties. This is something that should probably be rolled right into NativeScript core and work right out of the box with NativeScript. But for now, we have this plugin that's really well written. There's a ton of downloads of it. And this will actually abstract away a lot of the Android and iOS things for you. And where there are common things, this will provide you the properties for that, but it also provide you special properties that are for iOS only or for Android only. And uh, the documentation here is pretty good. So it'll tell you which properties are for which and how to use them. So there you go, folks. That's accessibility in native script applications. And you should definitely be using that, especially if you're going to be working on a government project or some corporation that requires it. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. And thanks, Mark, for the question. If you're not subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel and I will see you all in the next video.